Being a researcher in biology is anything but a walk in the park. One can guess that biologists have some of the best jobs in the world in that they work in the lab, conducting experiments where they test samples. Although this is undoubtedly true, these scientists actually spend more time before and after the experiment than during it. The scientific method tells us what needs to be done before the experiment, such as setting up lab protocols, formulating a procedure, and getting the equipment ready. What many people don't know, however, is what needs to be done after the experiment, or how experimental data gets turned into a readable format, how researchers analyze the data before conclusions can be made. There are a variety of methods in analysis, but it can become very confusing when working with a ginormous amount of data, often termed big data. The solution is bioinformatics, the study of processing complex data with more efficient methods, reducing stress and minimizing data clutter. This fast growing field manipulates biological data through technology that is constantly upgrading, increasing the depth and scope of scientific discovery. Researchers in bioinformatics collect and maintain biological data in high storage computer servers and process them by running programmable scripts for the data set. The field of bioinformatics bridges the gap between the data collected from an experiment and the conclusions that can be drawn from it. Bioinformatics through multiomic disciplines have found their haven in analyzing genomic data, gene variation in populations, expression through protein synthesis, and regulation through transcription factors. This can be used to create whole cell models, understand molecular pathways, and even design DNA primers for gene therapy to cure single gene diseases. Bioinformatics has its roots in DNA and protein sequencing. A scientist by the name of Frederick Sanger pioneered the field of sequencing with his technique, Sanger sequencing, or chain termination method in the 1970s. He used a replication method similar to polymerase chain reaction to replicate the DNA, but he also added dideoxy or chain terminating versions of the four DNA nucleotides, each having a distinctive dye. These nucleotides lack a hydroxyl group at the three prime carbon in the sugar ring, hindering its ability to attach another nucleotide to a growing chain. This effectively marks the end of the chain, which its base can be easily identified by the specific dye. Using this for artificial DNA replication through many cycles, the dye deoxynucleotides will attach to any base pair in the DNA sequence, effectively ending the strand length for a piece of DNA. With many other DNA strands having the dye deoxynucleotide at other positions of the molecule, a variety of strand lengths are separated through capillary gel electrophoresis. The strands are arranged from short to long, and the dye deoxynucleotides can then be read by a chromatogram to create the DNA sequence. This technique is very reliable for giving very accurate sequencing of DNA strands, and is still being used to this day for sequencing strands of about 1,000 nucleotides. However, this process is expensive and impractical for analyzing a full genome, for which there are newer, more efficient techniques for this kind of sequencing. Bioinformatics started to gain prevalence in the 1990s when the Human Genome Project was launched to map all of the human genes. This project has expanded to cover the genomic sequences of many other organisms. Whole genome sequencing, also known as shotgun sequencing, is a primary mechanism for sequencing the genome. It breaks the target genome into several small fragments that are separately sequenced. The sequenced fragments are joined together by a computer program that looks for overlaps in the fragments. Over the years, many more sequencing strategies have been developed to serve more specific purposes. For example, BLAST or Basic Local Alignment Search Tool uses an algorithm that searches hundreds of thousands of different genes, finding a similarity with the nucleotide structure of the target gene. The most similar DNA sequence, the homolog, is matched with the genome, and further experimentation may be skipped 
for modeling the genomic pathway. Another DNA analysis technique useful for bioinformatics is DNA microarrays. Having been in use ever since the 1980s, DNA microarrays work by inserting the target gene into a chip containing thousands of single-stranded DNA that are known to be associated with normal or mutated variants of a gene. The target DNA is compared to a control strand of DNA that has no mutations. Both strands are denatured to a single strand and cut with restriction enzymes to smaller fragments that can fit in the microarray. The strands are dyed different colors and are inserted into separate chips. The DNAs will bind to the complementary strands of DNA in the chips, depending on whether they are mutated or not. The two chips can then be compared with each other to spot any differences and mutations in the target gene. The microarray data can then be stored in a database to be further analyzed. The analysis of biological data goes beyond the genome, as it also includes proteomics and transcriptomics. Proteomics measures the total amount of proteins expressed by a cell, while transcriptomics analyzes the messenger RNA produced from transcription for translation in protein synthesis. Some proteomic techniques that can be used in bioinformatics include microarrays, where antibodies bind with target proteins, and mass spectrometry, where the proteins are ionized and separated by the mass to charge ratio. This data can be compared with DNA sequences that are transcribed to the protein to find any possible mutations associated with the sample DNA. Transcriptomics also uses microarrays by hybridizing matching RNA sequences, yet it also utilizes RNA sequencing, which extracts all of the RNA or total RNA from the sample, processing it through a variety of steps. For example, processing mRNA can be easily done through identifying the poly A tail of the strand, then fragmenting the RNA before reverse transcribing it into complementary DNA. The data can be mapped into a reference transcriptome, which can then be compared with other references to map for alternative RNA splicing and differential gene expression. The research in bioinformatics does not only involve the sequencing of biological data, as it also includes the computer programming aspect that serves as the backbone of data analysis. These programs can be written in a variety of languages and can accept biodata in virtually any form. Being a research student at Texas Tech University, I have observed the many programs or pipelines that my fellow bioinformatics research mates have used to analyze the genomic sequences they have sampled and experimented upon. One of them is the SAMHSA-2 pipeline, which combines a variety of basic genome processing programs into a streamlined one. Some of the researchers are even working on developing newer programs for more efficient sequencing of genomic data. Examples include working with SRA sequence read archive files where hierarchical sequence search algorithms are used to specifically detect targets in genomic data, whether it be in the form of Amplicon, Amplified DNA, or WGS, whole genome sequencing, and developing software that reads through NCBI databases to group gene and protein homologs into homology blocks to characterize their general functions. As time goes on, the methods of processing biodata are becoming more efficient, reducing the need to run multiple programs when all that must be run is just one. The implications of this field are all but ever growing. The most important ways in which bioinformatics is changing our society include gene therapy through identifying disease susceptibility genes from gene databases, clinical trial modeling through genetic algorithms to determine the potency of a medical drug, forensic analysis through finding short tandem alleles magnified through polymerase chain reaction to determine a suspect, crop improvement through simulated plant breeding to increase quality and pathogen resistance, food analysis through studying how nutrients and allergens affect gene expression in organisms, and biodiversity management 
through logging the many relationships between organisms and the environment. Bioinformatics can also be used in chemistry to render 3D models of molecules using X-ray crystallography, electron microscopy, and nuclear magnetic resonance. Looking at what bioinformatics can do, it is no surprise that this is a fast-growing field in the job market, being expected to increase from 8 to 10% in the next 10 years. There are many more techniques in bioinformatics to look at, but what they all do so well is manage a vast storage of data while implementing it to analyze various forms of biological data. Overall, the field of bioinformatics has made technology inspire us, using carbon-based silicon stored knowledge and science to form a direct link between collecting data and understanding what we know of life. Thank you.